Ernst Papa Alfa 0 en Koting Week over de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag, 15 november 2015. Het is het bulletin van zondag. In het weekend zijn de uitzendingen van de Daily Minutes in het Engels. Zoals gewoonlijk hebben we vandaag ook weer data onder de uitzending met de modus Contestia. Je kunt dat ontvangen met het programma FL Digi. Wat het gaat in de parameters staat op www.pa0ete.nl. All our weekend shows are in English. Today we also have Contestia running during the bulletin. Today we have some assorted news from all around the world. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. CSIRO is working on an energy harvesting backpack. Scientists from Australia's CSIRO's Advanced Energy Storage Team are working on a backpack which harvests energy from walking. The energy harvester takes the form of a roller captive in the backpack strap. As the backpack bounces up and down with movement, the roller turns, producing electricity from the small DC generator within. This electricity flows through the USB port built into the roller to the conductive fibers which are seamlessly integrated into the bag. At this point, the electricity can be fed to the flexible battery within the backpack or directly to an electronic device. Hey, if all the family wore these, you may be able to quit the grid. Also, as the price of battery storage for Australian households is expected to drop within three years, many are looking at quitting the electricity grid. At ministerial level, it has now been accepted as inevitable that significant numbers of people could and would quit the grid. Whether the high cost of electricity or a mere declaration of independence, battery power and solar energy are being embraced. Unless power companies fight back effectively, the CSIRO Future Grid study has found that one third of consumers may leave the grid. In VK3, the Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club invite the public to From Central Victoria to the Ice Caps, a presentation by Linda Bailhaas, VK3 FLIN. Among her many adventures, Linda was the first Australian woman to successfully trek the North and South Poles, skiing 1,100 kilometres from the edge of the Antarctic to the South Pole. From Central Victoria to the Ice Caps will be a story about ice cap wilderness and adventure, a metaphor for the many challenges we can all relate to in everyday life, such as the importance of a positive approach, finding your way, measuring progress and celebration. The adventure commences at 7.30pm Friday, November 20 at the first Bendigo Scout Hall. That's in Vine Street, number 9. A gold coin donation would be appreciated. Tea, coffee and biscuits available. If you'd like more information, get a hold of Kevin Crockett. The presentation again by VK3 FLIN from Central Victoria to the Ice Caps. Here's a new twist on a portable broadcast FM transmitter. The Raspberry Pi-powered Pocket FM was born out of work by MICT with support from the German Federal Foreign Office for the Syrian radio network. Pocket FM is a portable Band 2 FM broadcast transmitter the size of a shoebox that starts working as soon as it's connected to a small antenna, a power source and an audio signal. A single device can air radio programs over a radius of about 6 kilometres. At its core is the Raspberry Pi, an affordable computer board that can easily be further developed and modified with different features for different scenarios. Klaus Glenewinkel, MICT's co-founder and director, commented, The challenge in Syria is that it can be scary, in some areas, to set up big FM transmitters because they're easy to detect, easy to destroy and expensive to run. The small Raspberry Pi-powered pocket FM is just the ticket. Over at Southgate News, the question is being asked, whatever happened to WWBS? It's interesting to look back and reflect on the disappearing shortwave broadcasters from our past. Well, down in Macon, Georgia, USA, there was a private shortwave radio station with the call sign WWBS. Today, the huge Yagi antenna that once beamed 50 kilowatts of religious programming on the weekend still remains, but no transmission. The story of this home-brewed radio broadcaster that operated for over four years and suddenly disappeared from the 25-metre band in 2003 is best found when you read this week's text edition of WIA News and follow the link. The next topic is from the International Radio Report on CKUT in Montreal, Canada. The FCC and the Justice Department are investigating covert Chinese radio network. 
The Federal Communications Commission and the Justice Department are investigating a California firm whose U.S. radio broadcasts are backed by a subsidiary of the Chinese government, officials said. Both investigations come in response to a Reuters report published on Monday that revealed the existence of a covert radio network, which broadcasts in more than a dozen American cities, including Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, Houston, and San Francisco. Based on the reports, the FCC will initiate an inquiry into the facts surrounding the foreign ownership issues raised in the stories, including whether the Commission's statutory foreign ownership rules have been violated, uh, said FCC spokesman Neil Grace. The California firm is owned by James Sue, a naturalized U.S. citizen born in Shanghai. Reuters reported Monday that Sue's company, GNE Studio Incorporated, is 60% owned by a subsidiary of Chinese state-run radio broadcaster, China Radio International. The FCC doesn't restrict content on U.S. radio stations, except for rules covering indecency, political advertising, and children's programming. But under U.S. law, the FCC prohibits foreign governments or their representatives from holding a radio license for a U.S. broadcast station. Foreign individuals, governments, and corporations are permitted to hold up to 20% ownership directly in a station and up to 25% in the U.S. parent corporation of a station. GE does not own any U.S. station, but it leases two 50,000 watt stations, WCRW in Washington, uh, for more than $720,000 a year, and WNWR in Philadelphia for more than $600,000 a year. Through a different set of limited liability companies, Sue owns, co-owns, or leases virtually all the airtime on at least a dozen other U.S. stations. Those stations carry G&E content, which is produced largely by his West Covina, California studios, or by the state-run China Radio International in Beijing. The news programs on these CRI backstations sticks closely to the Chinese government line on a host of issues, including the current military standoff in the South China Sea between China and the United States. Sue's spokeswoman declined to comment Monday. In a September 16th interview with Reuters, Sue said his radio network abides by U.S. law. zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en s ochtends om half elf verder zijn de uitzendingen onder andere te beluisteren op youtube.com schuinestreep PA0 ETE. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzending is te vinden op wwwpa 0 etenl Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods prietpraat naar x-xdv.me.